Hello beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. Welcome back or welcome to Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for dropping in and hanging out with me for a bit. I'm very glad that you are here. Today we are here to do a quarter three book haul. So the books that I'm going to be featuring in this video are all of the books that I've accumulated since the last book haul that I did, which I believe was in mid-June. So all of the books that I've accumulated in July, August, and now most of the way through September. So all of the books for quarter three of 2023. And I have quite a decent stack here, so we are going to go ahead and just jump right in. Now these first books that I'm going to share with you, I was actually debating on whether or not I wanted to share them with you because I think I might actually turn around and unhaul them almost immediately, even though I just received them even though they are beautiful Illumicrate special editions that I intentionally ordered. I have been debating back and forth with myself whether or not to even give these a shot. So the books that I'm talking about are Illumicrate exclusive editions of Masters of Death by Olive e. Blake as well as One for My Enemy by Olive e. Blake. As you can see these editions are absolutely stunning. These are naked hardcover so these are not dust jackets. You can see that there's some beautiful gold foiling on the cover and then when you open it up you can see that there's a cutout of the end pages with all of that gold foiling and the roses. The end pages are gorgeous as well and then there is her signature and I believe that is the extent of the customization I don't think that there's anything else exclusive included in here it is the same for masters of death so you have that beautiful silver foiling there is the spine there is the back and then I just love these end pages so much with the bats and the moon and then of course when you open it up there you're seeing the cutout and I just love these end pages like the skull holy cow and that silver foiling it is absolutely stunning so to be quite transparent one of the reasons why I was inspired to pick these up was just because of how how beautiful they were and because I was willing to give Olive e. Blake a chance. If you've been with my channel for the past few months you'll know that I read The Atlas Six. I believe it was at some point last year and I wasn't quite blown away by it. I didn't like it. I thought that it was overly pretentious. It was not an accessible story. None of the characters were likable and I didn't get the dark academia vibes from that story that I was wanting going in. I gave it a three stars and I still wanted to read The Atlas Paradox because I had the beautiful again I believe Illumicrate special editions of The Atlas Six and The Atlas Paradox so I was going to give The Atlas Paradox a try but I got 100 pages into that story and I could not do it and I had to DNF. And then she came out with Masters of Death and One for My Enemy and I was reading the synopses for both and they sounded really really interesting and like something that I could potentially want to read and I was thinking maybe I should give Olive e. Blake another chance like maybe the writing in the Atlas Six and the Atlas Paradox is conducive to those books only and maybe her writing is going to be different in these two. Maybe she's telling these stories differently. But then I was watching a reading vlog where Rebecca and the books read Masters of Death and she was kind of explaining some of her issues with the book and Olive e. Blake's writing style and that was some of the same issues that I had with the Atlas Six and the Atlas Paradox. I think I'm going to have to admit to myself that I am not actually going to like these books, that Olive e. Blake is not the author for me, but if you have read either one of these stories, if you love them, if you feel like I should give them a chance, and if you know what I'm talking about when I'm talking about her writing style and the Atlas Six and the Atlas Paradox, like if you read them and you didn't like them but you liked one of these, please let me know because I could be swayed. I would hate to have to get rid of these so soon after getting them because like I said they are stunning and I was truly willing to give her a shot, but now I just don't know. I think like her writing might not be for me, so you're gonna have to let me know down in the comments. Otherwise these are probably going to immediately go up on my Pango. Another beautiful special edition that I recently scored because I just could not walk away from it. The Barnes & Noble exclusive edition of Demon Copperhead by Barbara Kingsolver. This is definitely a highly praised and highly acclaimed story. It is the Pulitzer Prize winner. That is how highly regarded this book is. And also it is going to be the quarterly book pick for the Bookworm Bitches book club that I run and help moderate on Goodreads. So from October through December this is our quarterly pick. And after I saw this edition in Barnes & Noble I was like okay I think I'm thoroughly convinced to go ahead and read it. Not me picking up a book and being convinced to read it because I absolutely love the cover. But I have kind of read the synopsis of it and it does definitely sound like something that I could be interested in because it sounds like it's going to be a very character driven, harder hitting literary fiction type of story. Now I don't necessarily always love literary fiction. My understanding is that this is supposed to be somewhat of a retelling or at least inspired by Charles Dickens' David Copperfield. Demon Copperhead is the story of a boy born to a teenage single mother in a single wide trailer with no assets beyond his dead father's good looks and copper colored hair, a caustic wit, and a fierce talent for survival. In a plot that never pauses for breath, relayed in its own unsparing voice, Demon braves the perils of foster care, child labor, derelict schools, athletic success, addiction, disastrous loves, and crushing losses. Through it all, he reckons with his own invisibility in a popular culture where even the superheroes have abandoned rural people in favor of cities. So this absolutely sounds right up my alley with how character driven it appears, and I'm actually really excited to get to it. I've put the audiobook on hold at my library, and as soon as it comes in, I will be diving into this one. A very impulsive purchase I made was the UK edition of The Collected Regrets of Clover by 
by Mickey Brammer. I love this cover so much more than the US cover and so when I saw it advertised, I can't remember if it was like on Waterstones or Blackwells or where I purchased this from, but as soon as I saw it advertised and I saw how beautiful the cover was, I had to go ahead and buy it because I read this a few months ago and it actually blew me away. This is about a woman who is a death doula, so it is her whole entire job to help usher people into death, primarily people who don't really have anybody else. And so she considers it her honor and privilege to be there to like witness these people's last words, last bits of advice, their regrets and things of that nature. But she is also very much kind of forsaken her own life. She doesn't really have a social life. She has no friends. She's in her 30s. She's never been kissed. She's never had a boyfriend. And this is really all about kind of finding herself and living her life to the fullest. And I just absolutely love this. I was not expecting to love this as much as I did. And so when I saw this cover, I had to absolutely jump on it because I love to have this in my collection. Next, I have Never Look Back by Alison Galen. I recently read this in August and absolutely loved it. So I had to have a copy of it. Alison Galen is quickly becoming an auto buy suspense thriller author for me. I loved the collective. I loved this one. This one was absolutely wild. It took some twists and turns that I was not expecting. And so if you were looking to get into thrillers, I think that Alison Galen would be a great place to start because she will take you on a journey. Speaking of a journey, y'all, I have The Only One Left by Riley Sager. This was one of my add-on selections, I believe, for the July Book of the Month box. And I recently just read this. This was the first book that I read in September. So my wrap-up of it will be coming out shortly. This book is a ride. It is wild. You can't trust absolutely anything that you read in this. And I loved it. This is certainly Riley Sager's strongest, in my opinion, at least since Home Before Dark and maybe strongest as a whole. It follows our main character, Kit McDear, who is a home health caregiver and she is desperate for a job and she is given the opportunity to go care for Lenora Hope. Lenora Hope was said to have killed her entire family back in the 1920s, but since that time she has really never left her family's estate. She's kind of just been there holed up and now she's had a series of strokes and she's paralyzed and she can't move or speak and so she needs constant care. And Kit McDear really can't turn down the opportunity, so she goes up there, she talks to Lenora. Lenora is ready to tell Kit her story and that's all I'm gonna say about this. I think that if you have enjoyed Riley Sager in the past, you are absolutely absolutely going to love this one and even if you have not enjoyed Riley Sager in the past you need to give this one a shot because holy cow y'all. Another author that can absolutely take you on a ride is Lisa Jewell and so for August I selected None of This Is True which is her newest release and I'm very excited to get to this one. My understanding is that this follows a woman who is out. She's celebrating her birthday and she comes in contact with another woman who is also celebrating the exact same birthday. They are like birthday twins. They get kind of caught up with each other and our main character is a podcast host and she's going to feature this woman in her podcast but this woman is kind of weird and unusual and there are definitely definitely some secrets and especially when that woman ups and banishes things get really really weird and our main character becomes the subject of her own podcast. I have literally heard nothing but amazing things about this story like it is getting consistent praise even people who have not liked Lisa Jewell in the past have really enjoyed this one and so I am hyped to get into this. Another book of the month add-on I had was Gone Tonight by Sarah Pacannon. This is a solo book by Sarah Pacannon. She usually is an author that writes with Greer Hendricks. I have read all of their books so far and for the most part I've enjoyed all of them. I'm excited to see what Sarah Buchanan can do. I do believe that this is about a complicated and fraught mother-daughter relationship that is full of secrets and lies. I don't really have any expectations but I'm looking forward to see what she can do with the story. Another book of the month add-on that we had, I believe it was for July, Love Theoretically by Allie Hazelwood. This is Allie Hazelwood's newest release. It is the next in her Steminist romance novels. I absolutely adored The Love Hypothesis. It was probably one of the best fake dating relationships that I have ever read but then I read Love on the Brain and I really really didn't like it. There were a lot of technical issues that I had with that story and the main characters. There was a lot of frustration that I felt and so this is another one that I'm going into very very cautiously. If you have read this as well as Ali Hazelwood's other two, you're going to have to let me know what you think. I do believe that this probably follows the same lines as her other two where it is a woman and a man. Maybe there's a love to hate or a fake dating or some kind of trope that gets them involved and they're going to fall madly in love and science is going to be involved. And I'm not mad at Ali Hazelwood's storylines. Like I don't even care if they're all that similar. It doesn't bother me if the writing is strong and the plot is strong. But I didn't feel that love on the brain had strong plot plot or strong characters. In fact, I was frustrated with it for the most part. So like I said, I'm going into this very, very cautiously, but I do want to give Ali Hazelwood another chance considering how much I absolutely adore the love hypothesis. And if this one doesn't work for me, Ali Hazelwood might just not work for me as an author. In August, I also picked up from Book of the Month, Family Lore by Elizabeth Acevedo. So I have never actually read anything by Elizabeth Acevedo. She is primarily known for her young adult work. In fact, I think this is her adult fiction debut and her work has never previously interested me. A lot of her work is written in verse and that is just not my thing. And since I've moved almost entirely away from YA, it is never something that I'm going to go back to. So even though I've heard a lot of great things about her, I'm going into this one very trepidatiously as well. I have honestly not heard much about this. So I haven't heard whether it's good or bad or whether it lives up to her YA. I'm not sure. I'm going into this one kind of blind overall because like I said, I've never read anything by
by her, but I'm excited to see if I enjoy her adult stuff. And if I do, I would absolutely be willing to read more in the adult age range going forward. Another book of the month thriller that I cannot wait to get to is Just Another Missing Person by Jillian McAllister. I read Wrong Place, Wrong Time earlier this year and I absolutely loved it. That was a suspense thriller that kind of dealt with going back in time and trying to solve a murder before it happens. And this, from what I understand, there is a missing girl out there and the detective who is trying to solve the case of the missing girl is kind of being blackmailed. And there's something secret that she does not want to be revealed. And the only way that she's going to be able to keep that secret is if she fails to find the missing girl. And I'm very, very intrigued. I'm absolutely hyped to see what Jillian McAllister does with this. I hope that I love it as much as Wrong Place, Wrong Time because that one snuck up on me. I was not expecting to enjoy that one as much as I did. And so I am really looking forward to reading another book by her. Another book of the month thriller suspense that I had to pick up and I recently read and enjoyed was Dark Corners by Megan Golden. So this follows the same main character that we followed in The Night Swim, Rachel Kroll, who is a true crime podcaster with a very big reputation, especially after she helped exonerate an innocent man. And this time she has been asked by the FBI to come look into the disappearance of a social media influencer. And the reason why is because this social media influencer was last seen talking to a convicted felon by the name of Terrence Bailey. Terrence Bailey is about to be released from prison after serving several years for like burglary or armed robbery or something of that nature. And he was talking to Madison Logan right before she disappeared and Rachel Kroll was the subject of their conversation. And so they think that Terrence Bailey might have something to do with her disappearance because they also suspect him of several other murders going back a few years, even though he's only in prison for burglary. They think that he's a very, very dangerous man. And so they call Rachel Kroll down to kind of help investigate. So you're definitely getting Rachel Kroll in the present. And then you're also getting a podcast version of the story that's happening, of course, after everything has already been solved. And I just love how Megan Golden was able to craft this. I really enjoyed everything that I read by Megan Golden. She again is another now auto buy staple suspense thriller author. And I was super glad that I was able to get my hands on this one. And then I think the final book of the month book that I have to share with you is Happiness Falls by Angie Kim. Angie Kim wrote Miracle Creek, which was a very interesting legal thriller that I really enjoyed. And so I want to see what she can do with this one. I believe this follows a family and what happens after the father of this family goes missing. And so there's definitely going to be some family drama, some secrets, some lies, and I'm absolutely here for it. Almost all of these book of the month books, I already have the audios for on hold at my library. And so as soon as those audios come in, I will be reading these as soon as possible. I'm hyped for every single one of them. All right, so we're going to go ahead and do some special editions. This first one, I don't know if it was in my last haul. I don't know if it came into me before or after I did that haul. So I'm going to go ahead and feature it here. And I'm featuring it here just to say that it did come into me, but I'm also going to be unhauling it. And that is Shanghai Immortals by A.Y. Chow. Like I said, this is the June Fairy Lee option. It is an absolutely stunning book. Nobody is denying that, but this is just not something that I'm interested in. And it has not been getting great reviews at all. I think it has a fairly low rating on Goodreads and it is just not my vibe. This, I believe, is a vampire story. It says, this is a richly told adult fantasy debut which teams with Chinese deities and demons cavorting in Jazz Age, Shanghai. And overall, it's just not really something that interests me. So I'm going to go ahead and unhaul it. And it is already up on my panko. The next one was Fairy Loot's adult book for July, and I'm excited to get into it. It is Immortal Longings by Chloe Gong. Look at those frayed edges. I absolutely love it. And what I love more about this one is actually the naked hardcover. Like, look how stunning that is, y'all, with the blue oiling. Holy cow. And look at those end pages. Um, one of the reasons why I'm really interested in reading this one is that I'm kind of getting like Mia Corberry vibes. This says this is an adult epic fantasy debut inspired by Shakespeare's Antony and Cleopatra. It is a fiery collision of power play, spilled blood, and romance amidst a set of deadly games. I'm absolutely here for it. I love me a good deadly set of games and a fantasy novel. So this is another one where I have the audiobook on hold and I will be getting to it as soon as it comes in. And then we finally have the August fairy loot that just recently came into me and unfortunately I think this is another one that I'm going to go ahead and immediately unhaul because it's not something that I really have any interest in reading. It's called Forged by Blood and I apologize in advance because I know I'm going to butcher this author's name. It is a Igbor Okusen. Like I said, this is absolutely stunning. I mean, look at that. Fairy Loot is not slouching on these special editions, that's for sure. Those end pages are phenomenal. And look at that naked hardcover, y'all. Holy cow. Their naked hardcovers are just getting better and better and better. This is a tale of rebellion and redemption, love and lies, forged by blood as epic fantasy at its finest, richly steeped in Nigerian mythology. And just like overall, like the plot and stuff just doesn't really sound very interesting to me. If you have read this book and you think I would enjoy it though, please be sure to let me know. I probably could be convinced either way but for right now this is kind of sitting on my unhaul pile. Next I have the fairy loot editions of the A Good Girl's Guide to Murder series by Holly Jackson. I recently just featured these in an unboxing that I did so I will be sure to link that down below if you're interested. I'm not going to go fully in depth on these editions but of course we have A Good Girl's Guide to Murder. Look at those end pages. Good Girl Bad Blood. This is book number two and As Good as Dead. 
those are my favorite and pages right there these editions are stunning this is a YA suspense thriller series that I absolutely enjoyed and I highly recommend if you have not already read this I was glad to be able to snag these editions from Fairy Lou. I also have the Illumicrate edition of Ink Blood Sister Scribe by Emma Tors this has been making the rounds recently and I've heard a lot of really good things about it and so I snagged the special edition because I knew that I was going to want to read it and in fact this is going to be the next fantasy book that I pick up physically these are the end pages it says not all books should be opened I love that there's the back there is the naked hardcover it's got some copper foiling there's the spine and there's the B on the back the end pages are stunning of course and then we have a signature right there so I am very excited to be getting to this like I said this is the next book that I'm going to be picking up physically and I will be either starting this today or tomorrow so I'm excited about this one and I absolutely lied about happiness falls being the final book of the month book that I was going to share with you because I just realized that all of these books that I talked to you about were primarily all July and August and I completely forgot that I have already received my September box I selected two for this box starting with the stranger upstairs by Lisa and Matlin I am excited about this one because this is kind of like a haunting house situation. It follows a social media influencer who buys a murder house where there was like a grisly murder suicide and she's trying to fix it up but the house is not exactly happy about her doing this and some weird stuff happens. So this is one that I'm not entirely sure if it's going to be speculative or if it's going to border on the speculative and there's really more a mundane human explanation for what's going on. I don't know but I'm here for it. I have heard nothing about this. This is a brand new release so I haven't heard good or bad things about it. I'm going in kind of blind and I'm excited about this one. And then the next one is The Intern by Michelle Campbell and I picked this up because it sounded like it was going to be an excellent legal thriller. I have never read anything by this author. This is a release that is actually coming out in October so it has not even been released yet. It says Madison Rivera lands the internship of a lifetime working for Judge Catherine Conroy but Madison has a secret that could destroy her career. Her troubled younger brother Danny has been arrested and Conroy is the judge on his case. When Danny goes missing after accusing the judge of corruption Madison's quest for answers brings her deep into the judge's glamorous world. Catherine Conroy a mentor a victim or a criminal? Is she trying to help Madison or use her as a pawn? And why is someone trying to kill her. As the two women circle one another in a dangerous cat and mouse game, will they save each other or will betrayal leave one of them dead? So I don't know if this is actually just like a legal thriller or if it's a thriller surrounding people in the legal field. I'm not sure, but it sounds absolutely fascinating and I'm here for it. It sounds like it's going to be fast paced, pulse pounding, and I'm down. I had not heard of this one prior to seeing it on Book of the Month, so this is another one that I'm very excited to get to. All right, for real, those should be the final Book of the Month books that I'm talking to you about. Next, I have Mad Honey by Jodi Picoult and Jennifer Finney Boylan. This is another one that I recently read in August and and I really, really enjoyed it, even though there is a lot of heavy social commentary in here. This follows our main character, who is a beekeeper by trade, and what happens when her 18-year-old son is arrested for the murder of his girlfriend. And I'm not really going to say what the topics are that are covered in here, just because it is kind of used as a twist in this story. Overall, I just thought this was really captivating, compelling, beautifully written. Jodi Picoult's books always are. They're very well researched. They're very nuanced. And I can appreciate that about her writing. I don't necessarily appreciate being hit over the head with a social justice topic as fiercely as you were in this story, but I was kind of able to overlook it a little bit and just really enjoyed the story for what it was overall so I wanted to have a physical copy of this on my shelf. In August I received as a gift A Court of Silver Flames by Sarah J Mass. This is one that I'm likely going to try to get to sooner rather than later but I'm kind of needing a little bit of a break from Sarah J Mass. I read House of Sky and Breath earlier this year. I believe it was like in May or June and then I immediately went into Tower of Dawn so I've been reading back-to-back -back Sarah J Masses and I just kind of need a little bit of a break with some other fantasy especially since I'm trying to catch up with these fairy loot releases that have been sent to me but this is definitely on my radar to read as soon as humanly possible. It is a chunker, but I do know that this follows Cassian and Nesta's story. I'm really hoping that Nesta redeems herself as she is not my favorite character in the first trilogy, but I know that the girl went through a lot, okay? And I've heard that this is amazing. It's one of the better books in that series, so I'm very, very much looking forward to reading it. And what's perhaps going to be the most unusual book in this haul, I have Tiny But Mighty, Kitten Lady's Guide to Saving the Most Vulnerable Felines by Hannah Shaw. If you're not familiar, Hannah Shaw is known as the Kitten Lady on Instagram and YouTube. She's got over a million followers at this point and literally her whole entire job is rescuing vulnerable animals primarily kittens and I got this one because she's literally living my dream life that is my goal is to ultimately be able to make a career out of rescuing and helping the most vulnerable animals that need our assistance in some capacity and I can't do that right now while I'm working full-time all the time but that is eventually a goal and I think that this would be a very handy resource to have just in general because if I do happen upon like a stray kitten or something it would help me take care of them so I just wanted to go ahead and have this on hand it's probably 
definitely not something that I'm going to like sit and read all the way through but it's just it's basically kind of like a textbook on helping kittens and I'm here for it and I wanted to support her because I just value what she does and I just love her so much and so I picked this one up to support her. I also picked up My Dear Hamilton by Stephanie Dre and Laura Kamoy. This is one that I picked up unexpectedly in August. It wasn't originally on my TBR but it satisfied an amazing readathon prompt. It was a chunker y'all. It was almost 700 pages. I know it doesn't look like it but these are kind of like bible thin pages and so this was a thick boy and it took me about four days to get through but I absolutely love this. I gave this five stars. I was not expecting for sure to love this as much as I did but this is essentially an ode to Eliza Hamilton. This is basically told through her eyes as she is telling her story and it just made me connect to her on such a deeper level and it made me realize what a strong woman she was and all of the shit that she went through and so I'm just so glad that I got to read this and learn a little bit more about her and this was an easy five stars for me and if you're looking for an amazing historical fiction I cannot recommend this enough. Another gift that was sent to me in August was Too Late by Colleen Hoover. This is a romantic suspense by Colleen Hoover which is slightly outside of the norm of what she normally does. She's typically contemporary romance not romantic suspense but this was a romantic suspense that follows a woman who has been in a relationship with a drug trafficker for two years. She doesn't want to be in this relationship but she feels like she has to because her boyfriend is currently helping support the medical needs of her younger brother and then one day she meets Carter who is an undercover DEA agent who is trying to infiltrate her boyfriend's operation and of course Carter and Sloan the main character start to fall in love and shit goes down. Um, ultimately I had a really good time with this. It was definitely engaging and compelling. It wasn't anything that was long lasting like it's not going to stick with me. I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 but y'all know that I'm trash for Colleen Hoover. I'm gonna read anything that she writes and this is going to live happily on my shelves with all of her other books. I also picked up The Roses of May by Dot Hutchinson. This is the second book in her collector series which are definitely dark. They definitely go there and even though they are short I think that they really pack a punch. I enjoyed this one actually more than The Butterfly Garden and this has convinced me that I want to continue in the series. There's only two more books left so it's not like an incredibly long series but I definitely felt like I connected more to the main character in this and then we got to know the FBI agents more so this was just a strong sequel overall. I liked the story and I just loved the sassiness and the grit of our main character in here so this was a solid four star read for me as well. Same for Flawless by Elsie Silver. This is definitely an author that is going around. Her Chestnut Spring series especially is making the rounds on TikTok, booktube, everywhere. She's getting a lot of hype, a lot of praise. I did really enjoy this story. All of her books are basically set in small town, I think Canada. I think they're in small town Canada on ranches with farms and cows and all of this stuff. The main character in this one is a champion bull rider and he's kind of got a bad reputation and so he is being babysat by Summer who is the daughter of his agent and it's kind of like their grumpy sunshine relationship and overall I thought it was well done. I really enjoyed myself. It wasn't a new favorite or anything but I am excited to continue in this series. I also picked up a copy of A Touch of Darkness by Scarlett St. Clair. This was another one that I read in August that I originally had no intention of reading. In fact I never had any intention of reading this at all but one of the prompts for the Amazing Readathon was to read a retelling and I had almost no retellings on my TBR. Retellings are not really something that interests me overall but I've heard some good and bad things about this series which is basically a Hades and Persephone retelling and when I read this I was actually quite surprised by how much I enjoyed this and so because I've decided that I will be continuing in this series I went ahead and bought a copy for myself. I also picked up Deadlands by Stacey Marie Brown. This is the third book in her Savage Land series and this is another one that I recently read and enjoyed. I will certainly be continuing in the series because I do love it. It is a fantasy romance series that I have really been enjoying. They're fast paced, they're bingeable, compulsively readable, and I'm looking forward to seeing how it all ends. Next I picked up Crimson Lake Road by Victor Methos. This is the second book in her Desert Plain series. This is another one that I recently read. I read it at the end of August and it was recently featured in my August wrap up. I will be sure to leave that down below. These are a series of legal thrillers that follow our main character Jess Yardley. She is a federal prosecutor and in the very first book you meet her as she is having to go to her ex-husband for help. Her ex-husband is Eddie Cal who is actually a serial killer now sitting on death row and she is needing his help to help solve some copycat murders of somebody who's like imitating his prior work. And in this series you are following a killer who is imitating very gruesome sets of art from the 1960s and just is trying to stop him and bring him to justice. So I just really enjoy the way that Victor Methos crafts his legal thrillers. He is so clever especially in the courtroom scenes. I very much enjoyed these first two books. I know that there is at least one more book in the series. I don't know if it's meant to be a trilogy and that's it or if it's going to go further but I will absolutely continue to read the series as far as he wants to take it. And then the very final book that I have for this haul is Triptych by Karen Slaughter. I ended up picking up a copy of this because it is on my September TBR and I'm just going to assume that I'm going to enjoy this story because I love almost everything that Karen Slaughter writes. Not everything, almost everything, but I wanted to go ahead and have a copy just in case. I do love it. I do try to read the books before I bring them into my home but this is just one that I felt safe kind of purchasing because I love Karen Slaughter so much. Oh actually I do want to include Little Secrets by Jennifer Hillier because that is currently on its way to me. That is the book that is being sent to me as part of September's Facebook gift 
gifting. I'm part of a monthly gifting group on Facebook where every single month we purchase something from somebody else's wish list and they purchase something from ours and it gets sent. And Little Secrets is the one that is being sent to me. So I did want to go ahead and include it in this haul because it's just going to be arriving in the next day or two. So I might as well. I have really enjoyed the three books that I've read from her so far. They haven't been like instant favorites and they haven't been five stars, but they're definitely intriguing. They're definitely dark. And that is certainly the way that I like my suspense thriller. So I'm certainly on the lookout for her and I'm excited to get to that one. All right, everybody, that is it. Those are all the books that I've hauled in the second quarter of the year. Please comment down below and let me know if you have read any of the books. And out of all of the ones that I haven't read, please let me know if there are any you think that I should prioritize. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty but want me to know you're here, go ahead and leave me a skull and crossbones emoji in honor of Deadlands by Stacey Marie Brown. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I aim to post one video a week, sometimes two, and I would sure love to see you in one of those next videos or on any of my other social media platforms. I always leave links to my Goodreads, Instagram, and IG threads down below if you would love to chat with me there. Y'all know that I love connecting with you whenever I can. And until next time, y'all, bye.